What's with this coffee and lemon juice weight loss trend that's taken the internet by storm? Start drinking coffee and lemon every morning on an empty stomach, thank me later. Coffee and lemon have their health benefits separately, but when they are missed, it becomes super beneficial for our health. Sound too good to be true? Magical weight loss drink. But what's behind the magic? Is it real? Is it safe? Does it matter? Through the years, we have seen many weight loss drinks and concoctions take center stage as the weight loss solution to try. What makes this one different? My co-coach Lucy and I spent $45,000 and 10 years combined trying to lose fat sustainably after trying and studying methods like these. And what we have found is that even if what you see on the surface may be true, it doesn't always tell the whole story about what's going on underneath and over the long term. And once you understand Understand how this trend works, you won't be able to see other weight loss drinks the same way again either. To uncover this, we have to start with how this coffee and lemon juice thing got started in the first place. Earlier last year, some TikTok accounts promoted mixing lemon juice into coffee for weight loss. One of them spliced together footage from Dr. Brian Boxer Walkler, a popular TikToker who makes reaction videos to medical claims with a shot of someone making this drink. The fake video, which has since been deleted, made it seem like the doctor gave his approval for the drink combo when he did not. This is often how weight loss trends like this start through a well-known personality. But if this is fake, how come so many people who have tried it claim it works? Let's look at some of the claims which fall under three main buckets. I do not feel hungry. <laughs> I don't feel like eating at all. I'm not craving anything. Some studies observe that the caffeine and coffee can help with short-term appetite suppression, although other results are mixed. The difference in results may be due to different genetics and existing coffee drinking habits. But if you're one of those who feel less hungry after drinking coffee, then that can help put you in calorie deficit because you're eating less. This is why caffeine is often the primary ingredient on fat burner supplements. But it's important to know that it's the calorie deficit, not the caffeine that makes the ultimate difference in weight loss. Because if you skip a meal but still overeat the rest of the day, you won't see weight loss results. This is why some people still gain weight on intermittent fasting. Even when TikTokers and YouTubers rave about this drink, notice they still talk about calorie deficits if you pay attention to their whole journey. For instance, this person's video title makes it seem like coffee and lemon juice made her lose weight. But if you look at her videos, you'll see that she was already making weight loss progress before she even tried it. How? That's what I'm doing. Just eating in a deficit. Now, did the extra caffeine help? Possibly. Somehow, someway, coffee is a appetite suppressant. But even then, she continues to advocate focusing on total calories for weight loss. And what happens is throughout the day, you're not overeating. You're sticking to your meal plan, not to mention if you're in a calorie deficit, because a calorie deficit is the way that you lose weight. She's using the drink as an aid and not a replacement for eating in a calorie deficit. Now, you may think, okay, but if a caffeine keeps me from being hungry, I won't overeat, right? Not necessarily. The appetite suppression effect is quite short term compared to simply eating regular nutritious foods like protein and fibrous vegetables. And using caffeine instead of getting actual nutrition may cause you to skip or eat a lighter breakfast earlier in the day, but you end up eating more later in the day to make up for it, as happened with the participants in this study. But if it's all about calorie deficits, how come some people claim to lose a ton of weight that calories can't count for? Pay attention to when they started their weight loss attempt. If it's at the beginning, then any weight they lose will come with a large water weight drop. But if you follow someone's weight loss over the long term, you'll notice that it almost always slows down after the first one to two weeks. In addition, the caffeine in coffee and to a lesser extent, the citric acid in lemon does have a mild diuretic effect, which means you pee more shortly after drinking them. But water is not fat. Besides water, others have reported nausea and diarrhea when they first tried this drink, particularly in the morning on an empty stomach, which makes them go to the bathroom a lot. This is a known reaction to caffeine on an empty stomach that some have. However, while emptying your bladder and bowels will obviously result in lower weight, that's again not fat loss and these effects won't last long term because there's only so much food waste and water your body can eliminate before it can't release anymore. And keep in mind that if this is you, it's essentially making yourself sick to lose weight. It puts your body under a lot of stress, which may do long term internal damage and it can be a slippery slope towards disordered eating. So losing weight too quickly can be a problem too. This is something we help the students in our Badass Body Boss program catch early on during their weekly progress check-ins. 
But what about metabolism? You might have heard that caffeine helps with speeding up metabolism and that's where the magic comes from, right? Popular sources say that caffeine can increase your metabolism by three to 11%. However, this effect like all the ones we have discussed so far is only temporary. The actual study showed a metabolism increase of three to 4% only during the one to two hours following caffeine intake, not the rest of the day. In order to get an eight to 11% metabolism increase, participants had to take caffeine every two hours for 12 hours straight. This is obviously unrealistic in practice, especially since doctors recommend no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. You may notice at this point that so far, everything's been about caffeine's role here. So what's up with the lemon? Some people claim that the citric acid in lemon speeds up metabolism, but we have found no research to back that up. Besides citric acid can be found in most other fruits, so there's nothing special about lemon anyway, other than it's fewer calories than most other fruits. In the end, there's nothing magical about the coffee and lemon combo. But it's a very catchy thing to try because it follows the hype formula to a T. And this hype formula isn't new either. It's in bulletproof coffee and detox teas, and I'm sure we'll see more kinds show up in the future. In fact, we get questions regularly on what's real or not real from our Badass Body Boss students, and the answer is almost always nuanced like this. If you want this kind of guidance for your weight loss too, then check out the sneak peek into our program in the description and comments below. All right, so if caffeine and lemon don't help contribute that much towards increasing metabolism, does anything. Actually, yes, but it may not be what you think. And I made a video here discussing what the top metabolism boosting factors are. And if you want to stack multiple metabolism boosting habits, then this video also reveals what the top 10 most effective habits look like in priority order so you don't waste time on the least effective ones. And remember, you can do it.